Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson on electrodynamics. Um, if you recall yesterday, we were talking about the AC generator and I'm not going to go through the whole video, but I do want to show you just a reminder quickly of what we're talking about. Um, so this is the AC generator. It has two slip rings and um, it has got two um, it's got two slip rings and it has an armature and you'll notice it gives you alternating current. So this is an AC generator and obviously it's got two magnetic poles. So now, before we carry on, we need to talk about what is important about, other than, <laughs> okay, before we carry on with anything else, we need to work out, be able to work out the direction that the current is flowing in. Okay, if you remember, if we watch this, Okay, again, and you saw the current was flowing and it was flowing in opposite directions as we went along, okay? But remember that this direction here is relative. All it's showing you is it's relative one direction to the other direction. So it's not telling you a specific um, direction either from north to south or south to north, okay? Or from positive to negative or negative to positive. So what you need to know is you need to know that there's a right-hand dynamo rule. It's also called a right-hand generator rule, generator. And the way that I remember it, because there's going to be a left-hand motor rule as well, is I always remember that right has got a nice little G in it, and both the generator, if you remember it as a generator rule, or a dynamo, dynamo, have got nice little things with dynamo have nice little um, things with tails. In other words, the generator's got a nice G tail and the dynamo's got a G. Where left um, is motor, no tails. Okay, left and motor have no tails. So that's the way that I remember it. So when we get to the left hand rule, you'll remember it as well, hopefully. So um, I don't care how you remember it, as long as you do, that the dynamo or generator is a right hand. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how this works, but basically what it says it is this rule can be used to determine the direction of which the induced current will flow. Because remember that in the generator, what you're doing is you're inducing current. You're turning this armature between two magnets, and by turning it, we're cutting the wires, uh, I mean, the, not the wires, the magnetic field lines, and by cutting the magnetic field lines, you cause current to flow through it. So um, the way you do this is, you take your right hand and you need to do this three dimensionally. So you stick your thumb up, okay? And your thumb is the direction of the motion of the wire. Um, and in the olden days, they used to say thrust instead of motion. So it's actually easy to remember because it'd be thumb and thrust, but it's basically the motion. It's the direction of the wire that the wire is going to move, okay? The field, this is the magnetic field, and this is your first finger, okay, your first finger, your index finger. So it's first finger is for your field, and the second finger, the finger that you show root signs to and everything else, is stands for the current, the direction of the current. So if you had to look at this example here, okay, do you see that you've got the field is going from north to south? Okay, the field is going from north to south. So you're gonna take this finger and you're gonna move it in the direction from north to south, right? Then they tell you that this was rotated this way. It's rotated this way. So the most important thing is that you need to realize that you have to look at one of these two wires, because obviously when this wire yeah, is being rotated up, this wire on this side is being rotated down. So you need to pick a side. So in this case, we're picking this side and we're seeing, oh look, this is rotating up, okay? So now if we look at it, we've got the motion going up and this is at right angles. So you need to think of it like this. Here is the motion going up. The field is going across and then at right angles to it coming out of the page would be the current. So we can see that the current is coming out of the page towards us. Okay, now before I show you an animation to help you understand this a bit better, I just want to talk to you about how the magnetic and electric field lines work. So if, for example, you have a magnet and you have 
another magnet okay and let's call this the North Pole and the South Pole then you would have magnetic field lines that would be they're supposed to be parallel and equidistant between them because it is a nice uniform field like you won't worry about the boundary lines now if for example I had to take a wire a single wire and let's say it is um, being moved okay it has been moved and I am moving it up okay what is going to happen is that by moving it up I'm causing a current to flow okay I'm causing a current to flow now what you need to remember as well is that um, if you I don't know if you remember this but if you have um, a, a current carrying conductor and it's going into the page the current is going into the page represented with a cross and if it's coming out of the page you represent it with a dot okay and the reason for that is because we're thinking of an arrow like an old-fashioned arrow where this would be if it's coming towards you all you see is the dot the front of the arrow whereas if the arrow is going away from you you see the cross hairs of the feathers okay so now let's think about this we have a magnetic field from north to south we're using the right hand rule okay we have the um, direction we're moving it up we've been told and we want to know what is the direction of the current okay so the rule is this if we had to look back we've got the magnetic field the field and the current are at 90 degrees to each other okay so in other words we've got the field which is going from north to south we've got the thrust or the motion is going from top to, uh, from bottom to top so if we had to use our right hand rule we would see that the current would be going into the page that would be the current so we would draw this with a cross okay right everybody happy with that so that is basically what happens and now what you need to understand is by doing that it actually produces an electric field around it but we'll talk about that some more when we get to motors and general I mean motors so let's have a look at this okay so we've got this um, Mag two magnets okay and you can see from this purple or pink or purple that the field is going this way and we're told that the coil is moving up okay so just a second I just want to see where this thing is so we're told that the coil is moving up and again what I've said to you is always choose one direction one piece of wire so in this case I'm using this wire here okay I'm using that one okay so then again if we're using um Fleming's right hand rule we can see that if the current is we've got the field going from north to south we've been told that this white piece of wire has been pushed up let me just change color to orange so that you can see it we've been told that this has been pushed up so this is going up like they've said we've got the field from the left to I mean from right to left so therefore using our right hand rule we can see hang on we can see that the current is coming towards us on that side so again if you had to look at it here is your thumb thrust which is going up here is your first finger of field which is going from the north to the south and your second finger which is direct to the current okay so um, I just need to raise all ink so you need to make sure your hand looks like this when you are pointing this out okay now what I often say to my students is when I'm demonstrating this in front of them that obviously I have to twist my body and to do torsions and all sorts of things because when I'm showing them how to do this I'm showing them in front of a big board okay so obviously I cannot change the diagram but you guys can change the diagram by turning the page around so you can't swap hands obviously because we're using the right hand generator rule or dynamo rule but you can turn the paper around so that it is easier for you to use your hand okay so you don't end up doing weird gymnastics with your hand okay so please feel free to do that instead of 
um, getting struggling with that. Okay, now let's talk about a DC generator. Now we're still talking about a generator, so we're still looking at the transfer of energy being from mechanical from mechanical to electrical, okay? But this time we're talking about a DC generator. So it is producing direct current. Direct current. Okay, so we haven't spoken much about graphs, but this would be an example of alternating current where the current is being produced is positive for one half of the revolution and then negative for the other half and this is alternating current and if you recall yesterday I said to you that basically most of the appliances in your house run on alternating current the only ones that don't are for example your laptops are the ones that have got that have got a battery in them okay because that means that they're obviously running on direct current and there's some form of transformer that is transforming the alternating current electricity that they're getting from the power supply into direct current okay so this is what an alternating current graph looks like okay now what the way to change it is to replace the slip ring with a commutator and the correct version is actually split ring commutator a split ring commutator okay so please remember that okay so let us have a look at this um, little video oh good it did play okay so first of all let me just erase all ink okay so I want you to just uh, let's go back two seconds at the moment do you see that there are two slip rings he has one slip ring and he has another slip ring okay and the way it works is that one of the slip rings is connected to the one side of the coil or armature and the other slip ring is connected to the other side of the armature okay so therefore the current is always going one direction through there and that I mean in the external circuit the current is going in opposite directions but in the internal circuit the current is always going in one direction okay so now let us continue <laughs> let me sorry i was laughing at the fact that i had to fight with it to make it play okay so now let's carry on so now you'll notice that we're changing it to uh, i hate it when it does that Okay, so let's play. Let's see if I can get it to do it. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to talk over it. You will notice the changes from a slip ring to a split ring commutator because that there is split. Okay. And what that there you go, it's nice and big now. And what you'll see is that these are the brushes, okay? And then there's two halves with a gap between them. And that's what a split ring commutator is. So what is happening is that, and I'm hoping that they'll show it to us. I'm gonna have a look now. Is what happens is that when this turns, don't worry about the segment and the mic and stuff. Just know that there are two halves to this thing, okay? And these are the brushes. So this whole thing turns within the brushes, okay? So what happens is it turns and as it turns, so what happens is that you end up with um, sometimes the brush will be connected to one half of the split ring commutator and oh there we go so at this point the one half uh, is connected to the one half of the split ring commutator okay and then what happens is that it's going to transfer electricity okay and then this side is connected to the other side of the split ring commutator okay so in other words you've got one brush here that's connected to the one split ring commutator and one brush here is connected to the other commutator and you'll see that the current flows through it in the direct version okay there's going to be a full direct transfer of electricity now now what's happened is this is swapped, okay? But you can see that the because it's swapped, 
what has happened? The current is still, this is still connected to the positive end of this battery. And this is still connected to the negative end of the battery, okay? So this is still the positive end of the battery, and this is still the negative end, well, not of the battery. Um, this is going to give the negative end of the resistor, the voltmeter. So what happens is, again, your current is going to flow in the same direction. So you end up with dynamic um, you end up with um, direct current. Okay, I'm going to actually, here we go. So there we go. The first one you've got A connected to this side and now you can see that this side has got A, B and A. So let me just, okay. So yeah, I'm not actually showing it to you, not very well. Okay, let me just pause it. <laughs> I'm going to fight with it again. Okay, let's see if I can pause it at the place I wanted to pause. There you go, let's pause it there. Right, so what happens is that as we're turning it, okay, let's say for example, we've got that the field is going from north to south. So the field is going from north to south and this has been moved up. So if we're looking at just this dude here, the A to B, okay, if we're looking from A to B, the field is going from north to south and this is going moving up. So if we use our right hand dynamo rule, because remember we are turning this thing, we're causing the electricity to flow. Then if we use our right hand dynamo rule, the electricity is flowing through there and through there, okay? So therefore the electrons are gonna come along here through B, along there, you can see it goes to the negative and through the resistors in the circuit and back up again. So that is the direction of the electrons. And notice that the electrons, please notice the electrons are traveling. Oh, let me just erase a little bit, to make it easier to see. The electrons are going up on the left-hand side and down on the right-hand side. Okay, so the flow of electrons is up on the left hand side and down the right hand side. Now, yeah, we're still turning, okay, same direction. We haven't flick flacked this thing. This thing is still going clockwise, okay? So now if we look at this branch here, okay, do you see that because this has been twist going up and because the field is still going from north to south, the electrons are still going up. But look what's happened to the direction of the electrons in that piece of wire. During the first part, the electrons are going down this side, this part of the wire. And in the second part, because it's swapped, the electrons are now going up this piece of wire. So even though this thing keeps turning clockwise and the flow of electrons is still continuous on the external circuit, in the external circuit, you've got this beautiful continuous flow of electrons. So as far as the electrons are going, as far as the external circuit, they're going around and through and out, round and through and out. That's awesome. But with respect to this piece of wire and this piece of wire, the electrons are going forward and backwards. Okay, yeah, the electrons are going forward and yeah, the electrons, so yeah, the electrons are going from B to A. Okay, do you see that from B to A? Yeah, the electrons are going from A to B. Okay, so they've swapped. Similarly, yeah, on the left-hand side, the electrons are going from D to C, and yeah, they're going from C to D. So do you see that the electrons are transferring, are being swapped in, in the internal part of the, the circuit? Okay, so on the internal part of this, the electrons are actually swapping direction all the time. but Externally, we've got continuous flow of electrons, and that's what makes this a direct current generator. Okay, I hope that explains it to you. During the middle bit, what actually happens, which is very cool, is that you'll have, this will be, for example, A, like between year and year, from there to there. Then there'll be a gap, and then there'll be B, okay? And what actually happens, which is very cool, is during its turning, 
this bit here touches the brushes. These are the brushes, okay? So therefore there's no current flowing through and the current ends up flowing just through the external circuit. So during this bit, the electric, the current will flow just through there and back through the resistor and then back again. Obviously that's if there's residual current flowing. If not, then the current will stop flowing. And that is also why your lights flash when the electrons are being, when you have a generator. Okay, so let me just see if I can get, if they give you that. Hang on, let me just see. Okay, every time it goes past, you can see it going past the zero, okay? At that point, if you were using um, one of those wind-up um, battery-operated, well, wind-up lights, um, as in where it's got a battery and everything else, then, then basically you'll notice that it goes to zero the whole time. Um, I'm talking about those lights that you use if you are out in the windows and they, 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 you basically squeeze them or you can shake them and you actually cause electricity to be produced by you shaking the battery, the light or by squeezing the handle. Okay, so um, that means and there'll be a gap between them when they are at zero, okay? In other words, the light will go dumb and then bright again, okay? Right, now let's talk about a couple, one or two exam paper questions. Just to show you the type of questions they'd ask you, I haven't asked anything complicated in these exam, I haven't included anything complicated in these exam paper questions, and I haven't included anything to do with calculations because we haven't covered that yet. So. Remember what I said to you about um, the coil, if it's going into the page or out of the page, okay? So this cross here shows you that the electrons are going into the page, into the page, and this is coming out of the page, okay? So if we're looking at using our right-hand dynamo rule, we would know that the electricity is flowing into the page. We've got that it's been moved up because they told us this. Okay, they've shown us the arrow, and you've got um, it going from north to south. Okay, it says the diagram below shows a coil that is rotated through a magnetic field. Name the principle demonstrated in the above diagram. Okay, so the principle is actually electro. Um, sorry. Uh, I'm using a pen here. Electrodynamic induction. Dynamic induction. In other words, you are causing electricity to be produced using mechanical means such as rotating and everything else. Um, also called electrical induction, but you need to use those for that phrase, okay? It says the maximum EMF is generated at position A of the rotational cycle. Give an explanation for this example. Okay, so let's talk about that again. So, yeah, we've got this North Pole, and yeah, we've got the South Pole. Okay, so we have got, let's pretend that this is already got its... Um, current being produced and flowing through it. So we have got our magnetic field lines which go from north to south, right? And they're supposed to be equidistant and the same size because it's supposed to be a constant field. So now if I, wrong color, if I now place a conducting um, a conductor into the field and I say that the current is going um, away from me and into the page then do you agree that there will be extending outwards um, an electric field or magnetic induced magnetic field induced magnetic field okay and we will use the right hand rule to work out the direction of that current of that field and it will be clockwise okay it'll be clockwise so in other words it's going to be like this and like this and like that and like that right now what you need to notice and what you need to realize is 
that these ones here are in the same direction as your north-south lines. So therefore, what's going to happen is going to be constructive, constructive interference. Inter oh, I can't write today. Let's try again. Constructive interference. Okay, which means that these are going to add up. Whereas these over here, this black one going against this red one, or this black one going against that red one there, over here you have destructive interference, destructive interference. And what that means is that these are going to cancel each other out. So what happens is that these are constructively being enhanced and these cancelling out to the wire gets pushed down. And that's actually where the rules come from. The left-hand motor rule and the right-hand generator rule come from using the fact of the knowledge of how these um, electromagnetic lines intersect. Okay. So the reason for you having a maximum EMF is for the fact that the, because the wire is at 90 degrees to the magnetic field, it will experience the largest EMF because of the fact that there are so many um, magnetic fields that are crossing each other at the time. The induced magnetic fields are crossing the magnetic fields from the magnets. So there's name one structure difference between a DC and AC generator. Well, a DC generator has got a split ring commutator, whereas an AC generator has um, slip rings. Okay, right, let's move on. Right, so now we've got another exam question, and this is more on the theory of what we've been talking about before. Where, but please note that these are all old exam paper questions from grade 12. Okay? It says a current is induced when a conductor is moved between magnets as shown. So you can see that you've got a galvanometer, you've got north and south poles of the magnets, and you've got a wire that has been moved up and down in the magnetic field. It says the magnitude of the induced current can be increased by, okay, so let's read these. It can be induced, increased by using stronger magnets. Yes, that would work because by increasing the stronger magnets, you're increasing the number or the density of the magnetic field lines. Because the stronger the magnets, the stronger the magnetic field lines, which means the more likelihood of us crossing one. Okay. Moving the conduct at higher speeds between the magnets. Yes, that would work because of the fact that the power or the voltage that's produced is directly related to the speed at which the light bulb, I mean, the speed at which the wire is crossing the magnetic field lines. So the faster the, the conductor moves through the magnetic field lines, the greater the change um, in the magnetic flux, and therefore the greater the induced current. Okay, so that works. Three, placing the two magnets further away from each other, no, that won't work. Why? The further the magnets are from each other, the weaker the field. And that would mean that there'd be a smaller induced current. Okay, so the correct answer is therefore A, because only one and two above are true. Right, now we're going to talk about electric motors. So electric motors go from electrical energy, you're right here, electrical energy, energy, to mechanical energy, mechanical energy. And you guys know lots of motors. In fact, most of the stuff, mechanical energy. Okay, so in other words, which is quite interesting, is that you're going to have if you wanted to run a house, you would need to have a generator which then generates electricity and produces electricity for the house, which then in turn is used to switch on the appliances 
which then run motors and convert the electrical energy into useful mechanical energy. I'm not saying electrical energy isn't useful, it's just I'm thinking about household. Okay, so now let's talk about the electric motor. So let's go look at a little video. So you can see that this is the electric motor and I just wanna put it on replay. I wonder if it will, no, it won't replay. Okay, but what is important about this is, you'll need to see, is that this has got a split string commutator. So the only motor you guys talk about is the direct current motor. And you will notice that um, I just want to see if I can get it to replay. Hang on a minute. I think. Hang on. Let me just go down for a second to where it is. Okay. And then I want to go to. Sorry, guys. I just want to make it replay so I can talk about it. There we go, and I need to edit the picture. Mm. There we go. I want to edit it. There we go, playback. And I want it to loop until it stops. Loop. Okay, so then we want to go to Sideshow and from current side. Okay, so let's try again. Okay, so now it's going to loop, so this is quite nice. So what you'll notice is that these are string commutators, okay? So that's what's different from the generator, is that even though this is an, um, a motor, and it's a direct current motor, and you can see that from the fact that the current is flowing. Okay, but now watch what happens. First of all, let's have a look. It goes, current goes in, okay and it touches that side and then you'll notice it stops for a second and then it continues and when it stops is when this is hitting so when the break between the two commutators the split between the split ring commutators hits those ends of those wires which should be on brushes there should be brushes over here that they haven't drawn in then it current stops okay so this would cause a flick 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 okay now let's talk about the magnetic field you will notice that we've got a beautiful horseshoe magnet. It's to try and um, increase the amount of magnetic field that this wire will be um, subject to. Um, you will notice that it is going in this direction and while it's going in the direction, a large portion of it will be always at 90 degrees to this because of the shape. Okay, so now let's have a look. So let's see if I can pause it. So the field, and, oh, I hate when it does that. Okay, I can't pause it, I just have to talk through it. Okay, so at this point here, you've got directions, okay? The white is of the current in the wire and the green is the field, okay? I mean the direction of the thrust. So you can see the magnetic field is going up down from north to south. You can see that the field, I mean the fourth thrust is going in this case in this direction and then the current is going around but now watch this current. Let's look at this current here specifically. Do you see it's coming towards me and then it's going away from me and it's coming towards me and there it's going around away from me. So even though the external current is the same direction the whole way through, the internal current swaps direction. Okay, the internal current swaps direction. So again, what you need to remember is that this we are going to be using the left hand, where is it? The left hand motor rule, where again, the thumb, the thumb is the thrust, the first finger, first finger is the field and it's a magnetic field. And the second finger, the second finger is what? It is the current, okay? And remember this time, 
you are given the current because we determine the current. We know the magnetic field direction. So therefore, we can just have to determine the direction of the the, it's in the movement, okay, because we're not causing it to move now, okay, in this case, we were converting electrical, I mean, we're not turning it, okay, with our hands, we are causing this wire to turn due to the electrical energy that is being produced, okay, grade 12, that's it for today, we'll continue with electrical motors and, um, and motors and generators in our next lesson on Monday. Have a great day.